Everybody wants a top five, and that includes the tight ends. Croc and I are going to go through our top five tight end prospects in this draft as they stand right now. Welcome to Locked On NFL Draft. <laughs> You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft show. I am your host, former NFL and NFL defensive back, Eric Crocker. And as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Ryan Tracy. Ryan Tracy from Rogue Analytics at Ryan Tracy NFL on Twitter. I am Eric Crocker at Eric underscore Crocker on Twitter. And we want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. As Ryan previewed, man, we are getting into the tight end group and uh, our top fives. And again, like always, disclaimer, we have not discussed our top fives at all. So they might be extremely different. And, yeah. uh, I, you know, usually... I make him go first, but I'm going to start this off and I am going to start it off. And this guy, I haven't seen him number one on too many boards, really no board at all when it comes to tight ends, but my tight end one, my tight end one, Cole Turner out of Nevada. Oh, all right. Now Cole Turner, obviously catching passes from Carson strong, six, six over 250 pounds. This guy is what I like to see. In tight ends, mm -hmm. and, and he's a pure pass catching receiver. Now he has the big body frame. They did not ask him to be any kind of inline blocker. Put his hand in the right. ground. Every blue moon, you see him kind of stacked behind the tackle, and he kind of blocked from there. But in the traditional sense of what, how a tight end is used in the NFL, he's not that. Now he is a little bit more similar to maybe a Jim, Jimmy Graham, where they split him out into the slot a ton. He runs a lot of routes from the slot. Uh, another thing they do once they get down in the red zone, they split mm -hmm. him out wide, and he's essentially a big ass tight uh, receiver out there on the outside. He basically looks like <laughs> Kelvin Benjamin. All right, he dang near is like Kelvin Benjamin when he split out wide. Big body, six six, and he's a legit six six. He measured in at six six at the Senior Bowl. Didn't see too much splashy plays from him at Senior Bowl, but when I watch him, he's more of a smooth runner. Runs to spots, does that well. I would say. He has the best hands, and not just from the tight ends. He might have the best hands of any pass catcher in this class. Reaching up with his big paws, snagging passes with one hand, two hands, going up over defenders, doesn't matter. He's my style of tight end that I want, just a guy that, like, pure receiver. And you can do so many mm -hmm. different things with him the way you move him around. So, Kurt, Cole Turner, I haven't seen him number one on anyone else's board, but he's definitely number one on mine. I, and I haven't seen him on number one anywhere either. And he's definitely on my list. He's not that high. I'll tell you that. But a couple of things that I do like about him, I'm looking for somebody a little bit more explosive. That's why he's not there. Yeah. Now, if he jumps out the gym and, and turns his testing on, I might reconsider that. But that's where he is. But like you said, he wins contested balls. And one of the, the metrics that I track at Rogue Analytics the most is, is a metric I call Air Force for all the pass catchers. And it's how much you win contested catches and how many times you get missed tackles off of that. And he is number two amongst the tight ends in that category. And so that goes a long way towards, like you said, if you can split out and get a number of mismatches and you win those contested catches, that's a recipe for moving the chains. And I think that's what you're looking for from him. He, he doesn't have that dynamicness though, right? We've seen some guys right. come out that have been like smoother and more explosive in out of breaks. Look at like a, a Obviously, you know, a George Kittle, who is extremely mm -hmm. explosive after the catch, making guys miss, throwing guys out the way. Um, Even guys, I mean, like Evan Ingram, when he was coming out, like he looked like a receiver, right? But he's kind of yeah. in that tighter frame. This guy is tall, lean. He's big, but he is more of a guy to run the spots, box out guys, settle down in zones, make all the catches. He does those things very well. But I would like, like you, I would like to see a little bit more explosive ability and maybe a little bit more run after catch. But I would like to hear who is your tight end one? Yeah, I like somebody that can go out there and make a splash play. He doesn't have to be elite all the way around. And it's a little chalk up at the top for me. I have Trey McBride, number one from, from Ooh, CSU. Okay. And the thing is, without the quarterback play, without a dynamic playmaker to deliver him the ball, I think he still has a lot of upside as a pass catcher. So I like his versatility. He also does pretty well in the uh, 
in the contested catch region, he is number three in that category. He also puts up the yards amongst this tight end group, who isn't the most used group. He's up there in the top two of actual production this last season in terms of yardage per game. So he's got the reps there. I like what he brings to the table. We'll see if he stays there through this whole process. But right now, Trey McBride's number one. I like it. And, and I have him on my list. Not that mm -hmm. high, so I'll give more of my take on him as we continue to march through our rankings. But McBride, I, I like him. There's a lot. I, I don't want to give away too much of how I feel about him. All right. We're going to get to our next two guys after this break our tight end two and tight end three but first i want to talk to you guys a little bit about bet online our football might be over but the basketball season is full steam ahead with both college and pro hoops all right from all the latest odds totals player performance props to you know where the next fire coach is going to land betonline.net is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs our bet line remains the best spot for all of your sports scores podcasts and news this season and it's not just basketball, y'all. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, UFC odds, right to the Olympic coverage and information. Head over right now to the website today and use your mobile device and learn more about the trends and action. All right, this is BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, here we go. So we're jumping into our tight end two and tight end three. I'll let you go first since I went first the first time. So who you got for us? You know. I am a sucker for somebody that's consistent. Uh, at this position in particular, I need you to be a little bit of everything. I don't, I don't want just an H. I don't want just a Y. I, I need you to be multiple because that's what the league's going to this year. And a guy that I think has flown under the radar for two seasons now that I just really like, and I'm not going to be able to give you, hey, he does this much better than somebody else. In fact, I'll have to check his stats. The thing is that he makes plays. And that's what I'm looking for. I have Jeremy Rucker number two right now on my board. I like what he brings to the table. I think he helps his quarterback more than most, and I think that can be key to where he lands. All right, so I guess what I'll do is I'll, I'll jump into my number three guy, then circle back to my number two because my number three is Jeremy Rucker. And I will <laughs> say this ab about him. All right, Jeremy Rucker out of Ohio State, I thought out of, the, out of my top five guys, he moved the best. Now, mm -hmm. I think he did take a little dip in his production because, you know, the change of quarterback, right? You, you went from uh, Justin Fields and how he was spreading the ball around, throwing the ball around. And, and Rutgers not the only one to take that hit. I think Chris Olave, mm -hmm. too, his numbers kind of took a hit losing Justin Fields as well, especially the way he pushed the ball down the field and did all those things. But Rucker, he's another guy who I, I – when I – in my notes, one thing that I noted was I think his best days are yet to come. All right, flew a mover. I thought he blocked well in space. That was one thing that I think some guys kind of struggle with at times, whether it's a tight end, receivers, whatever. But I thought he blocked well in space and was more than a willing blocker even when he was out as an end line blocker. They did some motion things where they would move him and he would come off the line and block guys. I thought that was really good. Uh, you know, he gives stuff at the top of routes. So that was good yep. to see. I talked about my tight end one, Cole Turner, how he kind of runs more to a spot and finds that spot, then settles down, and he's just like this big target. You can throw it anywhere in the vicinity of him. I thought Rucker was more of a route runner. So you, know, you talked about kind of that explosive ability. I think he has that. We saw him a couple of years ago playing against Clemson in the college football playoffs, some of the touchdowns and grabs that he was able to make on right. those tight window throws by Justin Field. So Rucker, that's somebody who I, I really like. Obviously, like I just said, he is my tight end three in this class, but circle back around and I'll give my tight end two and then you go to your tight end three. But my tight end two, I got Jalen Watermeyer out of Texas A&M. All right, this is a big body guy, big body. When I first watched him, especially if you watch from this season, and, the, and if this is the first thing you see of him, you say, like, well, okay, maybe not as sudden, maybe not as fluid, right? Uh, he moves smooth, you know, okay, catches the ball extremely well. Looks like almost like a back basketball player, how he kind of goes up, you know, uses his body to shield off defenders, catches the ball, things like that. You, you know, I watched Alabama. Then I saw some really nice run after catch ability. Again, not a guy that's going to really like shake guys and then just pretty run away from them. But you right. saw, okay, move, moves well. He's making guys miss, run after catch, solid. Mm -hmm. But then you go back to his freshman year and his sophomore year, and he looks more explosive. So I don't mm -hmm. know if he was maybe hurt 
or something. You, I've heard different things about potentially some, I don't even want to put this on them, but you know, work ethic, thing, just a little immaturity as, as most 20, 21 year old guys tend to have yeah. at times. All right. Can he work harder? And if so, I think that's even scarier because if he is someone that is like, okay, I'm not just going to rely on my athleticism. I'm going to really work to refine my route running, my pass catching ability, like, and be the best pro that I could be. He might have the highest upside of anyone in this class. So big time ability. Uh, and, and one more thing to talk about his just as a blocker as well, because uh, Cole Turner, not much. That's not his thing. <laughs> Again, against Alabama, one thing that really jumped out to me was how much they use him as an inline blocker. Now, I don't know if it was because, you know, Alabama and their terrific pass rush and they get after quarterbacks. They just used him more as a pass catcher because of that. But he was back there blocking the whole lot, and I thought he looked really good at it. You mentioned upside, and I think you're right. He is in my top five. I'll I'll make my comments on Weidemeyer here in the next segment. But upside is the big thing for him, and I agree with you. I think he could have the ceiling to surpass everybody in this class. But, you know, right now, my number three guy is probably, again, not a household name, but he makes plays. And he can line up in line. He can pass block if he needs to. He catches the ball when he has to. And he has a knack for being in the right place. He's a little thinner than I would like for a guy that's going to line up in line all the time, but he can split out and he can do a number of things. I like Jake Ferguson from Wisconsin, number three on my tight end list. Okay. So talk to us a little bit about what you think about Ferguson. And then that's another guy. I have him in my top five. So we have. Good. Good. <laughs> the, the same guys, but just kind of different orders. So what jumps out to you right away about Ferguson? The big thing for me is that he can adapt his routes. I think he can get skinny, and I think he's slipperier than he appears, at least on, on just a general look at game field. He has an, a tendency to be able to get away from coverage when you don't expect him to. And again, he comes up and he makes plays when it's crucial. He has the ability to lift his performance when it's on the line, and I value that, especially from a position that, like I said earlier, he and Rucker are kind of in the same vein for me, that they can do some blocking, they don't have to be a guy that always has to be split out. They can run some stuff. I can even see them, you know, running wham blocks behind the line of scrimmage, doing those things that in the NFL can make the difference in an offense as well. And I like his size. I feel he's got a little bit more room on his frame. I think he has an ability uh, with decent speed now. I'm really interested to see how he tests. But he's a guy that can pull away from linebacker coverage. And if he can sit down in those zones consistently, I think he can be a nice target, especially for a younger quarterback, and become a crutch for them. I agree. I'll, I'll get into more of my takes on him. But first, I want to talk to y'all a little bit about Bill Bar. All right. And uh, Bill Bar, it's this time of the year where everyone has pretty much given up on their New Year's resolutions, but not this year, y'all. Not this year. I'm sticking with my resolution to eat right. Thanks to Bill Bar. And it's almost like, you know, it's not really a resolution because I actually enjoy eating it. All right. Have you tried the puffs? If you haven't, you are missing out on one of the best Bill Bar tasting things that they have to offer and you know they have all kinds of different flavors they are infused with marshmallow they are fluffy they are marshmallowy they are not just a protein bar they are a treat and they are covered with 100 chocolate all right puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors yummy cinnamon churro uh coconut marshmallow banana cream pie i love that one uh so good guys so good and these are going to be your new favorite. I guarantee it. All Bill Bars are covered in 100% chocolate. Yes, the puffs included, 100% real chocolate. And the best part about these bars, as good tasting as they are, they are low in calorie, high in protein, so you can replace your candy bars with these. They are better. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories. All right? Come on, don't, don't eat all that bad stuff. Go to build.com right now and scroll down to, you know, their macros chart. And you'll be blown away by the high protein, low calorie, high fiber, low carb bar that this is. All right. Most built, most built bars, they contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to any candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Come on. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond. And they have new flavors all the time, including this month, month, which is white chocolate cookies and cream. All right. They are delicious. And the new flavors, they're coming out all the time. And you know, I think a flavor might be good. If you think so, I'm telling y'all, they might make it. And if they do, it'll be delicious. So at Built Bar, they're all about the taste. 
All right, they make it, it they make it taste delicious first. Then they figure out how to make it healthy. I don't know how they do it, but listen, they pull it off every single time. So go to built.com right now. Use the promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. All right, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, here we go. So we're, we're getting down to the, the nitty gritty here. We got our Titans four and five so far. I think we've all we've had about the, the, the same guys, just different orders. So who's your fourth tight end? This is going to be the guy I think is going to throw you a little bit. And this is a recent change for me. I just watched him the other night. And I had him lower down because of what I perceived is not the production that I wanted. The more that I watch with Purdy throwing to him, it comes on. Right now, I have Charlie Kohler as number four, and for mm. one main reason, he is number one in that metric Air Force. He had the most contested catches in this class in 2021. And I think that's what's important in what I'm looking for for a tight end. Again, not a guy that's always split out. I'm not looking for a huge wide receiver. I need somebody who can do a little bit of it all. And being able to make those catches in traffic with guys draped on you, he had good production in terms of uh, his yardage per game as well. And I'm just happy to see a guy that I know in a in tight spot in the goal line, he can go up and get the ball when I need to put it somewhere. I like it. Now, this is a guy I have not spoke about, but I know – or I haven't watched his film yet, but I know somebody who probably has my guy, Io. We'll have to get Io on <laughs> and discuss that. You know, his guy, and this is a little off subject, but Boy Mafe, I've been seeing his name all through social media. Oh. If y'all have been listening to us, you probably heard his name first on here because mm -hmm. we talked about him. We had our guy that trains him. He talked about him, and he talked about where he thought he would go, his strengths, his weaknesses, and now I mean, I'm seeing him all through uh, draft Twitter, everyone loving Boy and Mafia out of Minnesota. All right. So I'm pretty sure we can get some good information on this tight end. All right. My fourth tight end is Trey McBride. And I know he was your tight end one. So you talked a little bit about him. I I'd say some of the things that really jumped out right away to me was he moves well. I'm really big on movement skills, uh, mm -hmm. not just that cornerback position, which, you know, I love corners, receivers, and watching how they move, but tight ends as well, or anybody that has to be athletic in space. I thought he moved well. I did not think he was as explosive, but still that smoothness. I thought it was solid, especially for a tight end. A uh, thing that jumped out to me right away was his soft hands. He had really soft, strong hands. I saw some errant passes. He plucked them out of the air. No issues with any of that. Uh, not a guy that's typically going to make people miss in space. That's not necessarily his game, but uh, I thought he was a big, tough guy. When I noted that, a lot of it had to do with some of the things he was doing after the catch. You know, uh, take one time they threw a screen to him around the line of scrimmage, threw a screen to him. It was almost like a throwaway down, and he almost picked up. It was like third and 20. He almost picked up the first down just because of how tough and physical he was. I think he was a couple yards short of picking up that first down. But that was one thing that really kind of jumped out to me about Trey McBride's game. And there are some people that are really high on him. I'm talking about tight end one in some cases. So, mm -hmm. you know, you having him as tight end one, that's not too far from some of the other lists that I've seen. And what it said it for me, and I, I want your opinion, when we were watching the practices in Mobile, he had maybe the catch of the week for me from the tight end group. That one fading over the top, he was doubled. He was able to elevate, come down with it with two guys contesting it, made the play in the rain. And I thought that really sealed it for me because he can go to a, a northern outdoor team and be able to do some of that in inclement uh, weather conditions. And not really feel the force. It's cold, Colorado State. So, like, I, I like his projection to the NFL as well. All right. So, uh, well, I'll let you go with your tight end five, and then I'll give you mine. You already named him once. This is Weidermeyer for me, and it comes down to one reason. Everything that you said about the upside, about being more uh, explosive early, maybe there's something hidden there. But at the end of the day, I don't care if you're a wide receiver or if you're a tight end. Your job when you're in a route, is to catch the ball. And he is the worst drop percentage of anybody in this class at over 11%. He drops one out of 10 balls in this last season. And that is unacceptable to me. Yeah. As much as there's there's upside there, as much as I like uh, I like Cotton, uh, I like Isaiah Likely, there's other guys there. And why do Cotton I out of uh, Washington, right? Right. And so there's options there. And I don't know because I haven't done enough film on those guys. Maybe Weidemar doesn't stay in the top five. 
But the reason he is where he is now is because he doesn't catch the ball consistently enough for me. That's that's see now that's in, that's intriguing right there because a lot of people are really high on him and some people have as high of a first grade on him a first round mm -hmm. grade excuse me I, I don't necessarily have that but I I could potentially see why somebody has him there and then I could see why you know if you have an issue with some of the drops and you think that you know that's a concentration thing I talked about the work ethic right yep. where or I don't want to say work ethic excuse me the immaturity that may be there some of the things I've heard. If that is the case and that trickles over to his work ethic, you can see why there might be some concentration drops, at least to the extent of what you saw on film. All right. Now, my my tight end five is definitely someone that you spoke about already, Jake Ferguson out of Wisconsin. And, you know, when you watch him, I feel like he's like a Wisconsin badger. Like to every – like whatever you think about Wisconsin and guys that they have, big, strong, tough, physical guys – maybe not the most athletic guys. I feel like he like, he was that uh, everything that you think of those guys, right? He fit the stereotype of a Wisconsin player. So, you know, just watching him and how he moved. I mean, it's like, gosh, are they going to get him the ball in space? Gosh, are they going to throw to him? Are they going to throw a snack? Can I see him run a route? Does he have to block on every single rep? But <laughs> the more games you watch, you have to piece some things together. I start to see mm -hmm. some ability there more so than the other five. And I only watch five outside of these top five guys I have right now. I only watch five more guys like Otten mm -hmm. from Washington. I know, you know, a lot of people like him. There were some other guys as well. Uh, the more I get into this, maybe he's someone that could fall back just a little bit. But out of the guys I've seen so far, I, I like his ability and how it translates to the game. Now, I like the more, it's, you know, the, the pass catcher, type guys mm -hmm. that show me that big time ability to be able to do that. Can you catch 60 passes for me in the NFL for 700 yards? I'm looking for that guy, but maybe he's not that. And I don't think you have to be to still be able to make an impact on a team. You know, 49ers just drafted a guy, Charlie Warner. Warner wasn't a pass catcher at Georgia. They didn't utilize him at, at, at that at all. All right. But still got draft top five. There's, you know, he's still 49ers tight end too. Are they going to throw him mm -hmm. the ball a ton of times? No. Will they throw him the ball? here and there, and he just had to spell George Kittle, you know, a little bit. So, you know, there's more than a role to just being a pure pass catcher or just explosive guy or just a guy that's built like or looks like a wide receiver or plays like a receiver. No, nah, man, you can actually do some different things and be utilized and have value to an NFL team. I think Jake Ferguson, he'll be that. Who does he remind you of that's in the league? Anyone? Oh, man. Uh, I, I mean, I just threw out – Charlie Warner, you know, that type of guy where I don't know if he has like the big time pass catching ability. Now, maybe the more I watch the film, because you know how it is right now. We're still early in the process. I've watched two mm -hmm. games, uh, sometimes three, if I'm able yeah. to get through two. So I haven't seen a whole lot, but maybe I can watch more and maybe go back to a previous year like I did with uh, Watermeyer. And I might mm -hmm. find out, whoa, you know, there is more pass catching. Then I might be able to have more of a sense of who I want to compare them to that's already in the NFL. I'm not huge on cops. I just sometimes guys stick out to me and I have trouble placing someone that he reminds me of because he's he's a little bit everything to me. So yeah. hey, we're we're in the right spot. This is the difference, the interesting thing too, about what organizations are going to do too. You're looking for something different at the tight end position than I am. And right. I think that really goes to show the differences in the, the teams around the league as well, because who knows who's going to be in the position that they have, no offense, other more important, more impactful positions selected. Who's going to be the one that wants that tight end at the top of, of the second or maybe even the first round? Who knows? It'll come down to need, I think, as much as anything with what selection actually gets made at this position. All right. There's going to be a lot of needs flying off of the boards. We're going to get into more needs and more top fives. Next week, we're going to get into the offensive line. We're going to go uh, the interior guys and also the tackles and then start to transition into the defensive side of the ball. We also, on the next episode, have our Mock Draft Monday coming up. So make sure y'all stay tuned for that. As always, I'm Eric Crocker, at Eric underscore Crocker on Twitter. If you're like, hey, Croc, there is a, a tight end. You're missing out on this guy. He's special. Let me know. Please. Shoot me a DM. Tag me on Twitter. All that good stuff. Let me know who I need to be looking at. Also, we got Ryan Tracy here, at Ryan Tracy NFL. Check out his work on Rogue Analytics. All that good stuff. And, uh, yeah. We will see y'all next week. Come Monday, Mock Drive Monday. Let's get it. Peace. <laughs>